In this video we will demonstrate the lumbar single stage corpectomy technique in a patient with L4 ovarian carcinoma metastasis. Contents of this video is the introduction of the patient with the patient's history and physical examination and the radiological assessment, followed by the treatment options. After that we will demonstrate the surgery with the surgical video itself. Continued by the patient's post-operative evaluation and the conclusion. Our patient is a 52-year-old female who is complaining of severe low back pain and pain on her left leg and foot for over three months. The patient was diagnosed with stage 3 undifferentiated ovarian carcinoma eight months ago and underwent surgery and post-operative radiotherapy. On her follow-ups metastasis on her left urethra was diagnosed for which she was placed in a frostomy catheter. The patient describes severe low back pain with a visual analog scale of 9. The pain worsens on palpation and when the patient is seated, she feels pain and hyperesthesia on the anterior and lateral side of her left leg and foot. LASIK test is negative bilaterally. On examination a mild left dorsiflexion and extensor hallucis longus paresis is observed. Her deep tendon reflexes are normal. On the CT of the vertebral colon we can see a pathological L4 corpus fracture. On the axial views you can see how a lesion on the left urethra is destructing the L4 corpus. On this abdominal and lumbar MRI scan you can see that the metastasis on the patient's left urethra is destructing the surrounding bony structures. In addition the patient's PET CT shows the lesion on L4. After carefully evaluation we offered the patient surgery. An L4 single stage corpectomy with vertebral colon resection was planned. Additionally, a L3, L4 and L4, L5 discectomy with L3 and L5 polyaxial transpedicular screw insertion with rigid titanium rods was performed and an expandable titanium cage was inserted. The patient was given intravenous antibiotics prior to the surgery for prophylaxis. She was put in prone position. Care must be taken to avoid compression of vascular and neural structures of the axilla and inguinal area. It is important that the patient is kept in neutral position so that malpositioning of the screws are kept minimal. Neuromonitoring probes were placed. The surgical field was cleaned and draped sterile. After correct orientation under fluoroscopy or L2 to S1 median skin incision was performed. With blunt dissection and monocautery, the subcutaneous tissues and muscles are dissected. Under fluoroscopic guidance, polyaxial transpedicular screws were inserted on L3 and L5 bilaterally and a total laminectomy to L3, L4 was performed. The facet joints are removed and the L3, L4 and L4, L5 disc spaces are exposed. L3-L4 facet capsule represents the entrance point of the L4 pedicle. With the use of a high-speed drill the bony structures are removed. Care must be taken not to damage the neighboring nerve root. With rogers and punches, the L4 corpus is carved from lateral to medial. A L4 
L3-L4 discectomy is done. L3-L4 disc is removed from the edge of the end plate. Curettes are used to carve the end plate of the L4 corpus. With the help of Karras and Rogers, the posterior wall of the L4 corpus is removed by dissecting the overlying dura. This stage must be done carefully to avoid damage to the neural structures. The L4-L5 disc is removed. The inferior posterior wall of the corpus is removed with rogers. The contralateral facet joints are removed and the remaining parts of the L4 corpus which could not be reached from the ipsilateral side are extracted. After the corpectomy is finished, an expandable titanium cage is placed. Finally, the rods of the transpedicular screws are inserted and the screw nuts are tightened under compression.
the patient was mobilized the next day. Her back pain reduced to a visual analog scale of 4. The pain on her left leg is resolved and she went for physical therapy for the mild paresis on her left foot.